This was our long black, and I'm now gonna turn that long black into a long mac. Now I wanna make sure I've got good crema, get some nice texture in there. So both of them, single shot. So now we've got our latte and our mocha. You can put some of the chai powder back into a shaker. About 10 mil of froth, this choc chocolate's still settling. So that's kind of our go-to on our latte froth, beetroot powder and organic cacao powder. And it just makes the most beautiful color. And it's a real talking point, and people love to take photos of it. Hey guys, today I wanna to talk you through most of the drinks that you'll find on a coffee machine. You can prepare these in your cafe, you can prepare them at home, and it's what you'll find in an Artistic Cafe Partners account. That is because we have consistency between accounts. We want people to follow a great recipe. So let's get started with some of the basics. And first up, I'm gonna make you a short black or also, no, also known as a uh, espresso. Now that would be in my 70 mil cup here. I'm also gonna make a, a piccolo while I'm at it. I'm also gonna make a long black. So I've got my temperature control kettle here, set at 75 degrees. 75 is optimal temperature for this long black. Which means the customer is gonna be able to drink that long black and enjoy the flavors of that coffee without scorching the coffee when it drops onto boiling hot water. Of course you can use your hot water tap, but if you've got the option, you'll make a great one there. Now in this 170 mil cup, I'm actually doing a ristretto extraction. Now today I am using our Champion Blend. Beautiful coffee as a long black or as a, as a milk coffee predominantly. Nice and rich. And the recipe for this is 22.5 grams in, 45 gram, grams out for that full 30 to 32 extraction. So right there we have a short black or an espresso. There's no water, extra water added. There's no, um, nothing else to it. It's just coffee. Short black, espresso. This is an espresso machine. So technically everything made on it is espresso. I'm gonna spin some milk for this piccolo. I'm also gonna use some of the froth off it to make my short, my short black turn into a short mac. So I've spun that, latte texture, a little bit close to a cappuccino texture. On this, Lamazocco PB, linear PB, I obviously added about four seconds of air to produce that. So I've got my short black. I'm gonna spin my milk, get that nice texture. There's two ways I can do this. If I'm you know, quite seasoned, I can put a dollop of a stain of milk in on top of that short black. Macchiato means stain, and we wanna just stain that coffee. If you're not confident throwing it off, you can take some froth off the top and just add that. That is our short macchiato. Now for us, this was our long black, and I'm now gonna turn that long black into a long mac. Now I wanna make sure I've got good crema so I can stain that crema with a little bit of froth. Now there's a few other tricks to that. You can improve on that whether you're using more textured milk, but we don't want to fill it up. We don't want it to be like a piccolo on that. We want it to be a stain of milk. Now we've got all of this left. I don't need all of that to be able to pour this. This is my piccolo. This is a 90 mil glass. This 90 mil glass with some latte milk means I can still pour my piccolo. Wonderful. Short mac, now short black turned into a short mac, long black turned into a long mac, and a piccolo. All right, let's move on to our flat white and our cappuccino. Now, these are obviously very common drinks. And for us, really, because I'm gonna serve both of them in these Acme & Co espresso range cups, they're a 190 ml cup. Both of these coffees are gonna have our full normal extraction in them. So they'll both have our 22.5 grams 
of liquid in each cup. That equates to our single shot. So we're going to do what's called a split shot into there. We have those two. Now, I'm going to do the milk separately for these. That is because my flat white will have less froth than my cappuccino. Now, when I do my flat white, I spin exactly the same as I do with my cappuccino, but listen, I'm only adding a small amount of air, and that's it. I want it to be thin, but not completely flat. So I do add a little bit. Then when I go over to my cappuccino, I want to get the air in as early as I can. I'm adding the same similar style of air, but I'm adding it for longer. See, I'm still actually adding a little bit more texture there, and that'll be enough. Once I can't hold this on this machine, I can turn that off. So now we've got two very similar milks, clearly one a lot thinner, flat white milk, and this one a lot more volume to it, and that's our cappuccino milk. So I can now grab my single shot, stir that up, and you'll notice when I pour how much thinner it is, but I can definitely still get some nice texture in there. So that to us is our is a beautiful flat white. Now, a couple of tricks we can do here, but we've definitely got some nice textured milk. I'm gonna sneak a little trick I like to do in here. In Australia, we, put, we can put a little bit of chalky on top, just adds to the flair. So you can see how much more texture we've got here, so that I've got a lot more to work with. I don't need to bulge it over the top of the cup. Obviously, I just wanna show you the, that we have a good amount of texture in there that it holds up. So both of them, single shot, just changing the way that we texture our milk. Right. Like I said, champion coffee, nice, rich, beautiful. Beautiful and black, but predominantly for milk coffees, nice and smooth. Our recipe here on, on the Ampham SP2, 22.5 grams of coffee. 22.4 on this one. Consistency in our dose, consistency in our puck prep, NCD, consistent tamping, good high quality water in the Lamazoko machine. Now I'm splitting this shot because I'm putting it in a mocha and a latte. And these are a 220 mil glass. We've chosen that size because based on flavor of those coffees, we're really happy with the ratio of coffee to milk. We've done videos before talking about which cups to choose. We'll put a link to that because it does have a big impact on the end ratio and therefore flavor and strength of your coffee. Now I've got both glasses of milk in here. I'm gonna spin them together and then I'll split my milk. I'm doing latte style milk, so I'm gonna add what would usually be around four seconds of air for one of these. I need to add that little bit of extra air just so that I can get across the two cups. I'm gonna take that off, split that so they settle the same. Now I've got two milks, just the same. Now notice that I just had some dry coffee in the glass here. We do prefer that, we want it to be consistent, we want it to be the same amount of chocolate each time. I don't love adding the chocolate to the milk because then if I have any leftover milk, and obviously I couldn't have done this, that's a much better workflow, much faster to be able to split my milk. And I'll just stir that in. I gave it a good stir. You can pre-make a ratio of chocolate pre-mixed, but in this case, I've just hand mixed that one. So this is my mocha, a single shot, a 220, 220 mil glass.
Nice, rich 33% Kali chocolate in there. So now I've got the rest of this milk and this is my latte. Now, being that this latte glass is 220 mils, it technically is a little weaker than our flat white and our cappuccino because it has more milk than the 190 ml cup. So now we've got our latte and our mocha. Moving on, much like the powder that was in there, I put a scoop of powder of the hot chocolate in here and just pre-mixed it. It's about 15 grams worth of chocolate. You can get scoops or something in service. You're trying to find ways to be fast but consistent. So we want to make sure that we're, we're achieving that. So I've got my chocolate mix there. I've also got a chai mix that comes in a powder. There is syrups. We've done other videos. Go back and reference the other videos on how to make chais. But I've just used the powder today. It's probably the most common one that most people use, just in flavor and what customers generally go for. But I'm gonna show you a sticky chai later. So again, I'm doing milk, latte milk, latte texture, needing to add that little bit more air in there. Once we've added all that air, we just wanna spin those bubbles in. And I'll just split my milk again. Give that a good clean. Now we're back here. This is my chai and I'm just blending it in. You can still make it pretty. You can put some of the chai powder back into a shaker and put the shaker and shake that on top, much like you did with the, with the cappuccino. Or you can sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on there or something tasty, so. This is our hot chocolate. Nice and smooth, velvety chocolate. Yum. Now, have a look down here. You'll notice that there's about 10 mil of froth. This chocolate's still settling. So that's kind of our go-to on our latte froth. If we were to have a look at the cappuccino and the latte and the flat white differences, the simple rule is kind of five mils of froth for a flat white, 10 mils of froth for a latte and 15 mils of froth for a cappuccino. That's what we like. It's a good texture of, and mouthfeel for each one. And it's what the customers will hope for and expect when they come to an artistic customer and an artistic cafe and what they'll enjoy when, they, when you serve them. I'm gonna move myself over a bit here. I've got to make some room. So I'm about to make some somewhat unique drinks. I think it's really interesting in a cafe to have a range of different drinks, especially if not everyone drinks coffee. And that's, that's a huge opportunity if you're not already serving drinks that coffee lovers aren't buying. If, sorry, if there's people coming to your cafe and they don't necessarily drink coffee, you really gotta think about what your menu is for people that don't drink coffee, whether it's a chai, that's pretty basic, but then there's Things like this, chuming lattes, sticky chais, and red velvet lattes. So I'm about to show you how to make these. A little bit of a process to, to the sticky chai particularly, which is why it's, you know, they can sometimes be hard to find, but I love them. And I, th I think they really show cafes that are specialty that take the time and do it. It just takes a little bit more prep and organizing, which just involves this. This is 30 grams of uh, sticky chai. It's like a tea mix, it's got cardamom pods. It's not a sweet sugary drink like most people would expect from a chai. That goes straight into there. I'm happy with the sweetness from the product that we get, but you could add some honey in here if you wanted to sweeten it up. Now, I'm going to just cover that with some boiling water, maybe a little bit more as it soaks it up. And I'm gonna start my clock. So I want that to brew for one minute. All right, I'm coming back over here, because again, I'm gonna spin two more glasses of latte style milk. 
and I'll split that again because I have over there a turmeric liquid. That's about 15 mils of liquid with a little bit of boiling water added to it just to, just to heat up the mix. This is a turmeric latte. You can get them a little bit sweetened, which is nice, or unsweetened, whatever suits. And this, you just pour like a latte. Really cost effective, really time effective, and super interesting, and, and people just love them. They just think they're so cool to see. The colors in them are amazing. And if they like chai or they're not a coffee drinker, it's a great option for them. And this is another one of those. This is just four grams of red velvet. It's actually an organic beetroot powder and organic cacao powder. And it just makes the most beautiful color. And it's a real talking point. And people love to take photos of it. Maybe it's Valentine's Day and you start serving everyone's, um, start giving these out for free, putting love hearts on them. They're really interesting. That was super easy to make. I didn't have to use any coffee or do anything. And that's, that's just something you'll find in unique cafes and something you might want to serve on your menu. So, got totally distracted by that. I've totally overbrewed my chai here because I brewed it for two minutes. The recipe of how long you brew in the hot water and then how long you brew in the milk changes the flavor. So, this might be a little bit stronger. So, I'm going to add so milk in here, obviously all of these coffees, we can add whatever milk we want. But in this case, I've got some, full, some regular full cream milk here. I put it straight in. I'm gonna spin it all together. There's no sugar or anything in here, so I'm not worried about the steam wand issues of that. So I've brewed that. I'm going to start my clock again because I actually want this one to brew for uh, two minutes on this one. I'm going to make sure it's well stirred. And then I will pour that. And while I'm waiting for my two minutes on that one, let's just make a quick dirty chai. If you ever heard the, hear the word dirty, it means coffee. Coffee is not a dirty word until you make it. So, we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a double shot dirty chai. This one, I'll catch both sides of that with full 45 grams of extraction. soon. I'm running out of full cream. So let's try for the oat drinkers out there. We'll crack an oat milk. Give it a good shake. Keeping an eye on my time here for my brewed chai. Obviously from a workflow point of view, you're always trying to do two things at once. So we're, we're brewing our chai while we're spinning our double shot dirty chai milk. All right, so I've got a full double shot, all that chai powder in there. Again, this is where some people opt for the chai syrup. Obviously, just speed and time on that, but dirty chai, coffee and chai powder. And that is oat milk. So we're at our two minute mark here. Let's grab our strainer. Let's grab our glass. And this is what we call a sticky chai. Sticky, sticky chai, brewed chai, anything where you're actually infusing the milk. Now we can, I love a good, 
bang. We can get rid of all those bubbles. Again, we could sprinkle some of the chai powder on the top. We could put some something pretty on there and just have an effect, but that's a really nice experience for the customer. We do love brewing it and straining it for them. It does mean that we get to manage the flavor. If you do put it in a, a, uh, a pot or something, it's a great experience for the customer, but it can easily overbrew it and, and end up being a worse experience for them flavor-wise. So that is a sticky chai. And the last thing I'm gonna do is make you a magic. Now, magics are very Melbourne, and they're not something that we have predominantly done a lot of in New South Wales, but hey, we're on board. I've actually been drinking them for many years and not always had a name for them. And they are a ristretto extraction, so about 22.5 grams of, of dose, a 22.5 gram extraction, full yield on that one. I'm gonna do it on oat milk because it's very Melbourne of me. And we're gonna spin this quite thin, just kind of flat white style. I don't wanna to add too much froth to it. It's not latte milk, it's just thinner. Now, you tell me in the comments below, is it in a glass or is it in a cup? I've seen both done. Which do you prefer? Is this a drink that you like? All right, so, and then we're just, we're really two thirds full. We're not low tide, we're not three quarters, we're double ristretto, flat white milk, two thirds full. So that's another one you might wanna to add to your menu, you might just open it up to some travelers or some people that are around you. It's also a great conversation starter. Coffee's not just about having them on the menu just because you should. It's so your staff can talk about the different things. It's so that you've got drinks for the non-coffee drinkers. All of these drinks are quite easy to make. If you've got a good coffee machine, you should have a lot of these on the menu already. Hopefully this has been a great training guide. If you're a new barista opening or going into a new cafe, or if you own a cafe, maybe you wanna go check out an artisti account, you should get this product because this is how we keep consistency in our accounts. If, if that's of interest to you to join us and become an artistic cafe partner, I'd love to train this with you and get you consistent with your customers, just reach out to us. If you have any questions or you do things differently, let us know in the comments below. The feedback's great, the community always responds as well. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more videos just like this one. We'll put links to other relevant videos in the description below, so check them out. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, like this video, hit the bell icon so you get notified of all future videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys, bye.